Hello and welcome to Business Sense. I am Ralph Rivas. For today's episode, we have Converge CEO Jesus Boboy Romero. Hi, sir. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Sir, uh, uh, sir Boboy, uh, well, Converge uh, really boomed during the pandemic. Uh, as for the first half of 2021, your profits zoomed 158%. Uh, what's your outlook for the uh, for the year and for the coming years? Will we see the same figures? Uh, talaga bang ano malaki malak malaki talaga yung kikita niyo because of this pandemic, no? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, the the pandemic of course helped, no. But that's not really the only reason. We we think the fundamental reason is that the uh, high speed internet market, no. I refer to high speed internet is really uh, underserved and in some cases unserved. So what that means is there's so much demand and today when we look at the existing customers and the capacity of the major players, uh, there's not enough to serve the demand. So as a result, we think that this, uh, you know, this fast growth will continue even in a three-player market. Um, there's just too many customers still waiting to be connected. You, you just mentioned it yourself a bit earlier, Deva. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, now, Sir Boboy, uh, I understand that, uh, you know, we're almost two years into the pandemic. Uh, we're starting to, uh, you know, relax restrictions. Uh, mm-hmm. What's the prospect? Ano bang, what do we expect? Uh, do we still see people using the internet more? Uh, in the coming years or ma- medyo magsasabdu yung demand ng kaonte? Well, we, we think uh, there are two things to consider. No, One, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Philippines was simply lacking in terms of uh, high-speed uh, broadband services. So the take-up was really suppressed no, because there was not enough supply. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that we believe that the uh, behavior of the consumers has fundamentally changed. And by the way, no, the demographics have also shifted. So there's a lot more younger generation now compared to before. So, you know, the, the things like, um, let's say, study from home, maybe when the schools get reopened, there'll be less of that, right? But the other activities that we do on the internet, so for example, entertainment, um, communicating with our friends, families, and uh, some work from home, for example, but by the way, we actually launched our work from home packages way back in 2019, no? way before the pandemic, because it is also becoming a trend. So then when you think about people consuming so much data that cannot be served by you know, a, a just a postpaid or a prepaid mobile data plan, uh, we have a strong conviction that every household who can afford a high-speed fixed broadband connection will buy one regardless of a lockdown or not. Hmm. Now, uh, Converge is, of course, uh, investing billions to further expand the networks. Your network, uh, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Pero uh, do you see uh, the industry overall meeting the demand uh, given the pandemic? Or talagang nahirapan ba yung industriya as a whole in keeping up with the demand brought about by the pandemic? Uh, may, maybe, you know, speaking for Converge, for example, we, we do run into situations where, where we have facilities in, in an area and it gets sold out. The other experience is that uh, we get a lot of applications in places where we haven't rolled out yet. And maybe uh, another anecdote I can tell you is that when we opened in a big city in Cebu, a lot of the customers that we signed up, we interviewed them. Eh. Um, are you using a high-speed internet? If yes, who? Uh, what we found out was that uh, they have been waiting for quite some time. And uh, some of them who actually switched were still on DSL. So if there is a service, it's not necessarily fiber. And in many cases, there was no available fiber in the first place. So yon, mm-hmm. ang tingin namin na, you know, uh, the uh, the current players, no, and uh, coming from my experience, uh, cannot serve the demand today. 
Mm. And now we're uh, since we're already addressing that issue, uh, Sir Boboy, merong mga yung mga complaints, di ba? Uh, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, yung mga outages in several areas in Luzon, and, uh, and last year then, uh, massive din yung ano. Uh, medyo marami yung nagreklamo on uh, on the outages. So, uh, what's your response to that? Well, that's a strategic initiative on the part of the company today, no? Uh, to, to harden the network, as we call it. So, for example, yung November last year was a massive power outage in one of our big, uh, biggest network hubs, no? In Pasig. So, of course, the first thing we did was to make sure that that network hub has been rehabilitated totally, no? So, you know, we formed a different team just to do the uh, network and data center facility as well as the high availability power system. Second, we inaugurated a new network hub in Makati so that if something happens to PASIG, then, you know, we will not have too many customers affected. So Makati has been live since November of last year, you know, we uh, December. You know, we promised that in 30 days we'll set it up and we did. And then, of course, we have our, our Angeles hub, no? and we're building more. Second, um, we have been doing, even before those outages, what is called a distributed network. Because uh, the problem we had with PASIG was, uh, you know, it, it hosted so many customers. So when it went down, naturally, many customers got affected. So we're, uh, we started it, and we're still uh, in the process, and we should uh, complete by next year, you know? distributing the network so that a single outage will not bring down so many customers because sometimes you know no matter how proactive or uh, how forward looking you are there are um, unexpected things that happen or beyond our control tapos uh, recently it's it's a whole lot of fiber cuts no uh, we have a network that has two uh, paths the primary and the redundancy or the secondary no so one time we had three fiber cuts so affecting uh Cavite Laguna three so the other part of the hardening that we're doing is implementing implementing technology that will allow us to have more than two paths so instead of just the primary and the redundant there could there would be a third or a fourth or even a fifth no because the technology needs to be able to support that kind of configuration and um, this is, again, in line with the fact that we, we cannot control fiber cuts. You know, we even have what we call Bantay Cable. These people patrol our major backbones. And, you know, when they see that there's activity that may potentially affect our network, they try to intervene. But, again, you know, let's say you pass by at 8 a.m. and then 4 p.m. somebody starts digging, then you lose a fiber. So, um, that's the response we have. No, It's a major investment, hardening the network. Uh, having more fiber paths, changing the technology to allow us to leverage the multiple fiber paths, um, hardening the systems inside our nodes, no? the, the power, the cooling. And we've also implemented a real-time monitoring. Ngayon, no? So it can monitor temperature, nag overheat ba, which means the aircon is not working. It can monitor the battery uh, condition. Kasi pag nag-brown out, the battery should carry the load, diba? and generators, etc. So it's all going on as we speak, and uh, we're trying to finish it as soon as possible. Because part of our philosophy talaga sa network is to have a high availability network. But, you know, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you just learn as you go along. And uh, kami naman kasi we're very agile, no? Uh, no, very little bureaucracy. And it's uh, relatively easy, but we're listed now, right? So we have to follow certain governance procedures relatively easy to get approval for strategic initiatives like hardening the network yeah mm. now uh, i want to talk about uh the the use of the internet by uh, several businesses naman uh mm -hmm. any observations what types of businesses have uh, ramped up their use of the internet and uh how are you guys taking advantage of uh the new emerging trends during the pandemic uh the only maybe difference that we've noticed, no, because prior to the pandemic, uh, we also served a lot of enterprises. You know, that's why we relaunched our our business segment, no, Converge Business. During the pandemic, um, people were not coming to the office, right? 
for example, BPO industry. So either they are not allowed to operate in the office or you can only allow 50% utilization because of social distancing. So the connectivity or the bandwidth requirement of a call center actually decreased. But it moved to the homes of the employees, you know, work from home. So we have a lot of contracts with call centers and BPOs where they buy broadband to be used by their employees who are working from home. So that has been the, the major shift. No? And uh, I think uh, in, in most industries, uh, that has been really the case. Some uh, segments, for example, yung um, fast food industry, no, there were a lot of closures. So many of them uh, obviously also cut off their broadband lines. I wouldn't say right now that uh, any enterprise actually increased their bandwidth requirement or connectivity requirement. Uh, it's been the same as before, uh, save maybe for some companies who would downgrade. No? Now they realize that with 50% occupancy, I don't need to have so much bandwidth but it's all shifted to to the home for now the other segment that has shown a difference really is the smes no uh, in two ways many smes un unfortunately have collapsed right um, they cannot sustain not operating for more than a few months so they have to close down and if they had the connection again it's one of the first things they will disconnect but on the other hand on the micro side of it diba we know now that a lot of our countrymen are doing online selling and a reliable connection is now more important than ever. So, you know, man, medyo tumataas. That's why uh, last year we also decided to focus on the SME segment. Yun. Hmm. Now, uh, actually, I've read up here na yung business segment nyo has uh, uh, Flexibiz Day and Flexibiz Peak. Can you discuss a little more about the, the features of these uh, products? Okay. Um, yeah, as we know, SMEs, uh, they don't really have a, a whole lot of revenue. No? I mean, the, the revenues are not as large as a corporate customer or an enterprise customer. So, so um, budget and costs are very important. But on the other hand, the requirement, naman, the amount of speed they need has increased. So that's why we said, you know, we need to come up with uh, packages for SMEs that provide higher speeds at lower costs. The other major uh, insight we had, and, you know, if you think about it, it's not rocket science. It's, it was validated lang by, you know, asking customers. Most businesses don't operate 24 hours a day. Most of them would operate during the daytime. During the nighttime, uh, the store is closed, right? The office is closed. Maybe you still need uh, some basic connectivity for, let's say, the CCTV and stuff like that. No? So we said that, you know, why don't we create a package where uh, a customer would choose the time of day that he needs more bandwidth. Let's say it's nighttime, uh, daytime, generally daytime now. Or, and then charge them uh, less because you're not giving them a uh, full service. Because during the nighttime, it will be about half the speed. Which is to them is okay. If I'm not using it, then, you know, half the speed is okay. But there are also some customers who chose the night option. So, for example, classic example, talaga, the BPO industry. As we know, if you serve the American market, you operate at night. And during the day, most of the seats are empty. Nobody's using the network. So, we developed it then. That's why we call it Flexibiz because it's very flexible for them. Uh, it's a lot more bandwidth at a more affordable price. And uh, that has been well accepted by the market. They're actually uh, helping us to grow our revenues in the SME segment. Hmm. Now, uh, speaking of revenues on the SME segment, uh, do you have uh, some some prospects on that? Uh, mga ilang percent yung tina-target ninyong grow on the business segment? <laughs> I'd love to answer that, no? Uh, <laughs> what were... Uh, one of the things about being a listed company is you're not allowed to, you know, to make disclosures <laughs> that are not official. So um, we're about to disclose our results next month, no, for QT. And then there we can say that, uh, you know, it's X percent or so many millions or tens of millions. But uh, it's been um, a, a growing segment for us, really. Uh, it actually helped uh, us increase our business revenues, uh, at least for the second quarter, you know 
compared to the first quarter and definitely compared to the uh, 2020, you know, when the pandemic was uh, at its worst. Okay. I had to try to ask the question. Oh, yeah. But uh, uh, moving, on, <laughs> moving on to uh, your expansion plans, Visayas in Mindanao. Ako, Sir Boboy, nasa Mindanao ako ngayon. And uh, internet's a little wonky. So uh, uh, what's your, what are your plans for the Visayas and Mindanao uh, markets? Yeah. Uh, around, I think, the middle of the year, we turned up our Cebu backbone, uh, at least one leg. And uh, about two months ago, we turned up the bow. And then we're currently in the process of uh, activating the redundancy leg, no, the second leg. Now, every um, town and city that our backbone passes, we would provide internet, fiber internet services. So that's, that's what we did in, in Luzon. You know, even the smallest towns in Bicol or, or in, um, for example, Pangasinan, we serve almost all the towns in Pangasinan, I think 50-something. No? Uh, as long as our network passes there, we will serve. So right now, uh, the, the work that's been done, at least the one going to Davao and then soon the redundancy, is passing through more or less the middle of Mindanao. But uh, we definitely plan to serve the eastern side. And we plan to go all the way to Zamboanga on the western side. Same thing actually with Visayas. No? Uh, we are uh, in many of the big islands now. Bohol will be done soon. You know, in fact, we just uh, went live in Masbate. I think we're probably the first fiber operator there, no? Masbate City. No? So uh, Masbate happens to be one of the major routes of our backbone. So we will get to uh, as many places as we can. Uh, as fast as we can. That's uh, that's what we call our go national strategy. Hmm. But what about for this year or maybe even uh, next year? What are your targets for the Visayas and Mindanao? Because uh, you know, uh, 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 Smart Globe and other uh, telco providers are already all over the Philippines. Pero uh, I think uh, others are also anticipating uh, converge in their area. Yeah. So, so like I said, no. For for example, Mindanao, we first went live in Davao, and then Cagayan de Oro, and then soon the other, you know, um, cities like let's say Butuan, General Santos, and then progressively moving out. Uh, same with Visayas, no. So we're now live in Cebu, in Iloilo, Panay Island, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Bohol will be up soon. Leyte, so we will be progressively getting there. Um, the, the most important thing is to finish the backbone because once the backbone is done, again, any town and city, we will provide fiber internet service. Mm. Now, uh, of course, uh, the telco uh, companies have, yung mga, I don't know, annual complaints na rin ng other companies is that uh, uh, mahirap yung permits at the local level. So, uh, do you see the same concerns or uh, has the situation improved and made it faster for you guys to uh, set up infrastructure in uh, underserved areas? I think uh, th there haven't been too many uh, issues uh, in terms of permits from LGU. For one thing, kasi, uh, we only provide fiber internet, right? So, um, you know, we don't provide cell phone services, for example. Uh, yung kasi wireless, eh, that requires a whole lot more permits, including health permits, di ba? Sa fiber, wala naman. Um, minsan lang, um, it would be hard to get a permit to excavate the road so that we can lay our underground fiber. And uh, sometimes, the reason for that is there's a road widening going on. No? So in the meantime, we will do what we call aerial. So we just put it on the poles muna just so we can complete our work. And then pagka okay na, then you know, we'll put in the underground. And inside the uh, you know towns and cities, I'm not aware that you know we've had any major issues so far uh, in terms of getting permits from the LGUs. Uh, and you know at at any rate today there is already the um, anti red tape authority. Uh, we are luckily uh, not having not have been in a position where we have to knock on their door for help. And by the way, no, since mm. we are building up in such a massive way. Um, if there is a town, let's say, that is a bit delayed in terms of permit issuance, we just move on to the next first and then come back later when we get our permits. And, you know, there's 
there's not a lack of towns and cities to roll out fiber. So we're always busy. So yun yung, yun yung situation mm. namin. I, I, we, we haven't had any major issues with this. Imagine, you know, we, we did a submarine backbone across the Philippines, right? So from Luzon to Mindanao, uh, 20 on 20 landing stations and 20 submarine segments. And uh, we started this year and we're almost done. So wala rin kaming naging permit issues doon. Okay, that's good to hear. Now, uh, I'm also curious, uh, the elections season na, uh, starting starting now and uh, culminating to the actual elections next year, uh, may impact ba on business? Uh, and uh, how are you guys uh, adjusting or taking advantage of the election season? Well, I think for telcos, uh, generally, uh, that's more on the enterprise side. No? Kasi... Uh, during the election, the government would spend some money to make sure that all of the voting precincts are online, di ba? And, you know, I, I used to work for Globe, so we, we did this many times. It's about three-month contract to provide a connection to a certain school. And then uh, there are like 42,000 or 46,000 public schools yata, di ba? So there's a lot of uh, connectivity requirement, although it would be more short-term. From the consumer side, uh, the last election, we didn't really feel any uh, negative or, or positive effect. So, I don't know, maybe some of them did have uh, extra money to spend, but that's not our target market anyway. Because, uh, again, you know, we only do fiber and it's postpaid. No? So, our customers tend to be those people who have an ability to pay, for example, a lowest plan, one five. They have the ability to pay that month in and month out. So we didn't really feel any plus or minus uh, from the consumer side. Uh, some on the business side, you know, we want some contracts to provide connections to the government for election precincts. Mm. Okay, now I want to talk about uh, you naman, uh, Sir Roboy. Uh, medyo mahirap kang ma-interview and uh, medyo mahirap mahagilap, especially now during the pandemic. Now, uh, how are you holding up uh, during these trying times? Uh, any uh, any hobbies that you developed or uh, an, 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 uh, how are you uh, coping with this pandemic? Well, uh, one thing for sure, no, uh, most of us think that uh, it's more toxic now. Because, uh, you know, when pre-pandemic, we work in the office, uh, just as an example, right? You have two 15-minute coffee breaks. You have lunch breaks, right? And, uh, you know, you spend some time walking from one office to another, and uh, it was not, wasn't that easy to set up meetings. No? So people would be very conscious about uh, setting meetings and making sure that they're very organized and effective. Ngayon, everything is online. Zoom meets Teams, right? You get meeting requests left and right. And I wouldn't blame them. no? Because sometimes these things, when you're in the office, you bump into somebody, you resolve them. Diba? But now that we don't see each other, then you, know, you, you do it virtually. And it would be not unusual to see my calendar full from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., which is our normal working hours. And minsan kulang pa. Somebody would ask for 6 to 7. Somebody would ask for 8 to 9. And then kami ngayon, we're a listed company, di ba? So we do a lot of briefings for investors and analysts. And some of them are American and European. So we're not, uh, we're, we're kind of used to having briefings done at 10 p.m., and so on. Pero weekends are, are okay naman. Uh, wala masyadong work during the weekends. So I think uh, yun ang isang major observation namin. Parang work became more toxic. And, and by the way, I think uh, it's also gonna affect the uh, physical fitness of many people. You know, one day I was sitting down for like 12 hours in a, in a meet, uh, during the day, then investor briefings. Pagtayo ko, grabe, my back was hurting. But in the office, you stand up, you walk around, etc., etc. So, ako naman, uh, you know, I, I've always uh, loved to play golf. No, uh, I'm an outdoor type of person. What I really miss, though, is being to, able to go to the beach. No, uh, my son yesterday went to Bataan to Anbaya. He thought that you know it was all okay, so he played there. But then they did not allow him to go to the beach club. Sa beach club, kailangan daw ng PCR test. <laughs> so it's it's kind of tedious <laughs> and expensive to get a test just to go to the beach for a day. That's that's one I really uh, miss, no? But, you know, I play a lot of golf uh, on the weekends. 
And sometimes, because, you know, now I'm an early riser, I got trained, no? Sometimes 5.30, I go out and play, then come back and start working again. So it helps you keep mm. sane, gives you a lot of vitamin D, sunlight, and it's very safe, no? You're outdoors, hot sun, strong wind, so very safe na, no? Na hobby siya. Mm. Now, uh, although you work, yung, yung sense ko is, uh, although you're, you work for... Uh, a telco company the internet uh you know internet all over you uh i mean it's it's there and uh you work uh in the internet industry uh would you recommend um uh, screen time breaks para hindi masyadong toxic yes definitely like, like i said no uh like my smartwatch would always remind me stand up and stretch diba and uh, by the way ito my glasses the one i'm using now it has a blue light filter <laughs> So, you know, many mm. things you learn over time that, you know, doing this is uh, is not healthy then, di ba? So, I totally agree with mm. you. There are just certain days na, ang break mo na lang if you're lucky, no, is lunchtime. But from 1 to 6 p.m., from 8 to 12, sunod-sunod na meetings. So, tama ka. Sana, mm. and you know, people when they book meetings, automatic it's one hour, eh. It's not like, okay, 9 to 9.45. Hindi ganun, di ba? They book it 9 to 10. Mm. And most of the time, overtime pa. Mm. Now, uh, uh, very quickly, we don't have much time, no? Uh, what's the next trend or what are the next upcoming trends that uh, Converge is looking at? Uh, ano ba? Uh, there's Facebook and the met- so-called metaverse, uh, mm. Internet of Things. Anong tinitingnan nyo na sa tingin nyo there's a lot of potential? Um, well, if you look at the needs of a household, no, so definitely um, today uh, being able to work from home is one of them, and you know that's what we're already doing and serving now. Uh, in the uh, at the same time, entertainment, right? So we were all familiar with that. Whatever it is, Netflix, HBO, even just YouTube, no. So um, many movie outfits, as you know, are starting to do. Uh, online only uh, screenings no yung mga launch nila are online na hindi na sa movie houses so we think that this will continue uh, obviously netflix was the one who popularized it and then another area would be uh, safety and efficiency of your household so you mentioned it no internet of things so so you know like me my home everything smart home you know i hey google turn off study room aircon mga ganon di ba so hmm. ano siya uh convenience but uh, the part about home security automation wala pa kasi sa US ano na yan eh, it's kind of mainstream no here probably a bit early probably the costs are on the high side but for high end houses we see it coming uh lalo na ngayon ang mga developments for example sa video no CCTV that is CCTV it's there it's static you review after something happens there's a lot of artificial intelligence and video analytics uh, products that are already mainstream, you know. So you know they, they can record a video stream, uh, not not record, no. It's streaming, it's live, and then based on certain patterns, it can actually do uh, certain automated functions. So that's another area where we're looking at, uh, other than uh, working, uh, entertainment, and then the safety and uh, efficiency of your household. So those are some things mm. coming up uh, for us now. Okay, so uh, more uh, online concerts and the uh, potential uh, use of Internet of Things, although at a limited uh, basis, as you mentioned. Uh, looking forward to uh, uh, developments in the in the coming years. And with that, thank you so much, Converge COO Jesus Boboy Romero, for your time. And I'm Ralph Rivas. Thanks for watching Business Sense. Yeah, thank you, Ralph, and uh, thank you to. To, to your viewers as well.